new session for PHP. Uh, in this session, we are going to cover uh, mainly about query feedback. We'll have a follow-up session on the next uh, query to run, but we'll just do a quick processing of what a query feedback means. Uh, before we go and start working on it, let's download the addItem.php file from the course website. So this is the addItem.php. Uh, make sure that you have downloaded this file and copied it to the htdocs folder of your uh, inside the htdocs folder of your project so this is my project inside the htdocs folder for the web server and i have just renamed it uh, from html extension to php so that it's, it's a php file but when you download it from the html page it adds the html extension so once you have downloaded and set up the file make sure that you have started your server and it's running both the Apache server and the MySQL server. And then once you have copied your file to the to the folder, your file should appear over here. Add item. So this is my add item file. What I would like to do first, as you can see, that this file is not complete, starting from content. So that means there is something missing from the top at the bottom. This is the header at the footer, as we did for all other pages. So I'm going to do the same thing over here, which is I'm going to add the header at the footer which is uh, before I add the header and the footer, if you remember, we were setting the title attribute and we make it add item. Okay. And then we will use the require uh, function to, in, to include the header.php. Okay. And then we'll do the same thing going at the bottom. We would include the, uh, the footer.php. Okay, and this would be it. So let's go back to our page and see if everything is working. Let's go to our uh, buy for me. And this time I don't want to go to the home page because I don't have a link to add items. So I'll just go and type buy for me at the add item page add dash item dot php and you should see this form and this form should be you know a form with uh, four fields inside it uh, product id product image uploading the image uh, product name uh, upload the image and the price and then we have the add button so uh, essentially whenever we press the add button we would like this page to be added to the uh, added the item to be added to the database that we had created earlier now the all oh, the issue is if you remember, in the previous cases, we studied about query. It's not the first time we are studying about query feed, uh, feedback. For example, when I press the stuff page, a query is running. If you remember what we did in the previous class in stuff.php, we actually ran a query. And that query was to select star from stuff. This was the first query we did. So that means we had done queries before. So what is the difference between that feedback and what I am going to tell you today. So if you remember that this feedback of this query is actually shown to you on the screen. So if you get more than one item from the database, you get you show the list of the items on this page. That's your feedback. So which is which is good. But sometimes you want to sh you you get a feedback like you get a confirmation. For example, running the insert func uh, command. Right, you are here. You are running the insert query. Now, when you get a reply from the insert query, it is whether successfully or not successful, or an update query, or a delete query. So, what you are doing is essentially you get a feedback saying that if something was ha something happened successfully or not successfully. Now, whatever you get from the database is some other value. Now, you have to show that to the user saying by a feedback message. So, when you receive something based on the value you receive, you provide a feedback to the user saying that whether the item was added or deleted or updated successfully or not. So what we have to essentially do is think of how we can do this. Okay. So in the first session, we will just talk about the approaches. And as we move on in the next few, next session, we will talk about the ins actual insert query. Okay. So let's go back to our page to the to the add item page. Okay. So what we are going to do in this page is pretty simple. First of all, we are going to see how should we submit the page, which we did earlier, right? So what we did was whenever we are using the get method or the post method, the data is sent from, 
from the form to the server. This we, this we saw earlier. Now, so what we are going to do is get the form variables and then send, send the data from the form to somewhere to process. Okay, And once the processing is done, and here the processing would mean uh, running the insert query, we would, uh, we would acknowledge the user. And there are three approaches for doing that. So we'll see the three uh, approaches over here. So before we even go there, we need to first of all know uh, how to go from one PHP page to the other PHP page. We saw that we can submit some data from one page to the other page by using the uh, by by setting something inside the form uh, tag form uh, element, right? So if we set something like in the form element to redirect the page to somewhere, we will go to that page in the form tag. But how can we do it inside a PHP? We haven't up till now done it inside from the PHP page. We did it from HTML. If you let's go back and refresh our memory if we remember if we go to let's say uh, the stuff.php page and from here we were actually going to another page by using the href okay but href again remember is an HTML tag we are not going from PHP we are actually going from HTML so we're constructing this uh, constructing this and it's also based on action Suppose sometimes you don't want to do it based on an action. You don't you, you want to include it in the workflow? Okay, so we'll see we'll see how we can do that and why would we do that? Okay, that's the first question. So the function that we are going to talk about is called the header function. The header function the header function allows you to go from an existing page to whatever location you want to redirect. So here I would be location and I'm going to say for example put a name of another page over here and I would go to that page. So if I put header and inside that I have a location attribute and location colon and I specify the named attribute that I want to send. This is usually referred to as named attributes. So what are your named arguments okay, uh, or named parameters. So what I'm going is setting the location to some value and the header function would take this value and redirect the control from the current page and send an HTTP request to the other page and we move to the other page and we will see how, how it is possible to do that. Okay, So let's talk about the three approaches of how to uh, give you feedback after a submission of a form. So the first approach is you go to another page. So you are in a page, you ask the user to enter the data, you get all the data from the form and you send this data to some other page and this is if you remember what we did earlier so when we get the data uh, this is in the in the in the toy example that we were doing with with php we were getting all the data in a page uh, and sending it from the sender.html to receiver.php okay uh, so what we need to do is do the same thing over here we will get all the data from the add item add item.php and we would like to send that data to another page which will process the query and run the results. So this way we will call it let's say for example how do we do that? We usually did that by going to our code and just simply adding in the action over here say add process.php. Okay so if we do this what happens is whenever you add all the items in the data the it, as it will send everything that you have entered to this page and in this page you can go ahead and say run the query get the result and show the feedback okay so let's see how this could be done so here it's already written that add, dot, add process dot php so i'm going to create a new page a new file and i'm going to name this file as add process right this is what we were uh, redirecting to and in this file I'm not going to do much because I will not be using this approach so I'll just do something like because I'm going to exp I expect it to receive something from uh, the other add item right and I'm using the method post so it will be inside the dollar underscore post array so I'm going to receive PID the name 
let's not do the files right now. We have a complete new uh, different session on files. So let's ignore files and we'll not upload files in the first two sessions. And then the price. So what I will go do over here is let's go back to our page and say let's store these incoming variables inside let's say PID and we'll store them in dollar underscore post and I will store that as PID because that's the name of the uh, name of the form element that is coming right and then I will change this to dollar uh, name that will be dollar underscore post name. And then the last one would be the price because I'm ignoring the image for now. Okay. So now we have received all the items. Let's close the PHP. Now we have received all the items from the other page by using the post method. What we will post array by, because we send it, send it to the post method, we received uh, all the items. And what I would like to do is I want to just show a message. Okay, you say echo the item dollar PID or dollar name was ins inserted successfully. I'm not going to write the query right now, okay, because this is just. Uh, example and once I received it I'll say exit and that's it that should be my PHP page it's not neat it's not well written for now or we'll just make this as you know, an h1 tag so that's it's, it's a big bigger okay so what I'm going to do is I'm going to save this and we'll go back to our page and see how it works so I'm going to go back to my page and refresh the page and let's enter, let's say 101, say uh, the clock and say 100, say add. So the item clock was inserted successfully. So what is happening is whenever I go to this page, I add all the data, I click submit, it goes to the action uh, attribute inside my form element and the form tag gets this action item and then goes to this page. And this is uh, something that we already did in the previous toy examples. Now, what we want to like, what we would like to do over here, is to see what is the problem with this. If we do it this way, now some browsers, what happens is when the user is here and he, they go back, the form I resubmits whatever you are, whatever you did earlier. So. It's not a good idea that the form will resubmit again if you go back to the page. If you're sending an email, suppose, it will resend the email. If you're adding something that was not unique, that means your database will have too many, you know, noise inside it. So uh, this Safari doesn't do it, but some browsers were supposed, were, would do that, okay? So if you do, if you are doing a database action, you know, an action which will change the database, not like select star dot from uh, from stuff dot php. In a select query, what happens is you're not you're not changing the database. Okay, so what the insert query or the update query or the delete query, you're actually changing the database. So you would not like to do that action again. So if you if someone is using the back button of the page, if it resubmits the form, that's not a good way. Okay, even if one of the browser does it, because you never know you, which, which browser your user is using. So you would want to avoid this approach. In the second approach, say, okay, if it goes back, if, if, you, if it, resub, it redoes the action that you did earlier, if you are going back, let's solve this by, you know, first it will go to add process. The add process page will do the adding of the query, but the message like says, thank you very much, will be shown in another page called add success.php. So there should be add success or add failure or you know just say add confirmation saying that you will you are happy with the submission of the user or something went wrong and you want to inform it. But how many pages are you going to create? So for each for each page just to handle this form you have to process that in another page and to give a message of success and failure in another page doesn't make sense right too many pages 
So again, this is not a good way to do it. So a better way is never to leave the page itself. Okay. So what we do essentially is we just copy everything we did over here. So I'm going to just say just just say copy. Okay, because I'm not going to use this page anymore. I'll go back to my original page. And then I would just simply remove from add process to add item only. Okay, this, will, this is the current page itself. So I'm going to make it add item.php. So whenever I press the button, it will not go anywhere. It will come back to the page from the top. Okay, and what I do at the top is I will just paste whatever I just did. Okay, you can remove the PHP statements and put it inside that one PHP statement to make it look nicer. So I'm going to do this. So everything is inside one, one PHP function. Okay. Now, I cannot use exit because if I use exit, it will stop the page immediately because this is the first time. So let's, let's, let's think of how what is happening. Okay. So I'm going to save this page for now. We just copied it. So add process is no longer needed because I removed add process. So whenever I, so the page, you have to understand how the page is executed, right? So let's save this page and go back to our page here. I'm going to refresh this page without submission anything. You can see this, that this line of text over here appears. The item was inserted successfully. Now this line of code, this, this part of the code that I just copied from the add process, I don't want, I don't want to run immediately. So when you run the page for the first time, it's starting from the top. So it goes here and say, okay, it doesn't know that you have submitted the page or not. It will work perfectly if I submit the page, like see this over here. So test. See, when it comes to it comes back to the page again, it's saying the item test was added successfully, answered successfully, which is okay. But it should not appear when I am going to the page for the first time. So this 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 part of the code should not be shown until I press the submit button. How can we do that? How can we do this? How can we stop the page from executing by you know not going there? The one way to do that is if you remember in the previous uh, previous examples. We did the stuff.php page. We studied a function called is set. Okay. The, the question is, is can we use this over here? So what happens is whenever you press the submit button, all these the dollar underscore post array is created and the items, the PIP, name, image, not the image, image is done a different way, but we'll study that later. Price and even the add button is added to that array. Okay, let's let's check it out. Let's let's see what happens. So what I'm going to do is let's let's do this first of all. Currently, the is set is uh, sorry the, the the dollar underscore post is empty, so it doesn't have anything. I just want to show the is set or uh, the the dollar underscore post array only when the form is submitted. Only when the form is submitted. So we would use the if statement and we we'll say use the is set function and in the is set function we will specify any one of the items that the user will enter okay so let's say let's for now at least we'll just say the PID okay so we'll say if is set dollar underscore post and we'll go over here and say PID Anyone doesn't matter for now because I'm, I'm, I'm going to show you something. So we'll just remove this part and we'll put this part over here. Okay. And then what we will do, what we would like to do now is to go back to our page, refresh the page. Now you can see you don't see that message anymore. Because what happened is whenever we are going from the top in the beginning, when we load the page for the first time, we are going from the top. When we come to this point, if I set post, it says no, no one actually submitted the form yet. So this part, the post array is not set yet. So it will not execute it. It will not execute this part of the of the code. It will jump directly to here and it will show the remaining part of the page. But once you fill in the form, 
say you want to go one, test, and 100. Once you fill in the form, now the name, the PID is set and it's using the post method. And I'm coming back to the same page. So when I press the add button, what happens is it comes back to the same page and this time the item is this, the part of the code that you were blocking by using the is set statement will be executed successfully. Now, first of all, let's understand this, this, this post array, right? We did this earlier, but let's understand. So it's a dot. We're going to use a function called var dump because we cannot use echo to display an array. An echo is usually used for strings. So if you want to show a complex item, which is a which is data structure like like a associative array, we use var dump. So I'm going to use var dump, and inside that I'm going to specify my post array. So I'm not going to specify anything else, just the post array. Okay, and I don't want to continue executing it. Or let's execute it. Doesn't doesn't matter. So if I if I just say var dump. Okay, so I'm going to save this, I'll go back to my page, refresh my page, and see, when, when it came back, you see that the, 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 the post array has, uh, is an associative array with four items inside it, which is a PID of value 101, which is okay, name with value string, price with value 100, and it also has add with a value of add. What does this mean? That not just the values you enter are passed, even the button is passed. It tells you which button was clicked. Suppose in a form you have two buttons, you know, add item with a with condition, right, with discount, something like that. You know, we'll, we'll learn about this, how to handle multiple buttons later on. But the main idea I just want to show you over here is that when you submit the form, not just what the user enters is sent, but also this, this button is sent, add, okay? And if you go back to our code, this add button has a name called add, so the key of the associative array would be add, and the value of the associative array will be the value here, which is this add, capital A, D, D. If you go back and see this, capital A, D, D, okay? So this is the key, and this is the value. So, whenever we submit a press a button, the add, the name of the button and the value of the button is set. So, the best way to know if a button is pressed or not is to just do this. If it's set, the name of the button. So, you know which button was pressed. If it was the add button or some other button that was pressed. So, instead of using one of the items, because you know, you, don't, you never know which item was needed or not needed or required. So, you cannot fix your submission of the form on a specific item in the form. You can do that if it's a primary key. Let's say for example, this thing is required. Without this, the form will not be submitted. Then you can add, you know, is set for this item. But it's also always safe to add a set to a button because you always want to execute this, this part of the code, the top part of the code, only when the add button was pressed. So this is why uh, I just went through all of this to just explain to you that you can use the isSet function to check if the post array has an item called add, which means that the add button was pressed. And then you could go in and do whatever you just did. You we'll save this, we'll go back to a page, we'll refresh the page. Initially nothing is shown because the button is not pressed. And then we we'll go back and then we we'll say this, we'll say test, hundred and, and the item test was added successfully okay so this is the three approaches that we just talked about so the first approach as we saw is you submit all the items so all the data to another page called add process not good because if someone is in a browser where you press the back button the query is re-executed and we don't want to do that to avoid that the second approach was invented which is you go to add process and then from add process you go to add success or add failure which also is not good because we don't want to do that creating multiple pages just for one query so the third approach is to do the feedback in the same page itself to do the, but the issue whenever we do this is that that part of the code should be executed conditionally and to make it possible we used the is set function that will check if a button was pressed or not, if a value is set or not, and that value that we are looking for is the name of the button. And if that value is 
instead what we do essentially is we just go inside and do our job currently we are not doing that right so in the next video which is an assisting video to this one we will learn how to run 